Music legend Tina Turner recently passed away in her home near Zurich, Switzerland, where she had lived for almost 30 years, a place that she had made her sanctuary. Her property was more specifically located in the town of Kushnat, where Tina was a valued member of the community, and the star revealed in her 2021 documentary Tina that she spent the last phase of her life in private alongside her husband Erwin Bach. Tina Turner passed away at the age of 83 on May 24th, 2023, following a long, unspecified illness. In what may have been her final public words, Tina told The Guardian about how she hoped the world would remember her. She responded to this question saying, as the queen of rock and roll, as a woman who showed other women that it's okay to strive for success on their own terms. And when she was asked about what frightens her about getting older, she replied, nothing. This is life's full adventure and I embrace and accept every day with what it brings. After Tina's passing, tributes were laid outside the iron gate of her massive mansion with notes from from fans reading things such as you're simply the best and with candles and flowers being piled outside. In her recent documentary, we could see that one of the main properties Tina and Erwin called home in Switzerland was their Chateau Algonquin estate. They moved to the countryside back in the 90s and she said she liked it in Switzerland because everything here runs according to the rules. While Tina reportedly didn't speak German, one of the national languages of the country, her husband would always translate if needed. While Tina Turner was born in Tennessee, she became a citizen of Switzerland in 2013 and renounced her US citizenship after marrying her longtime partner, German-born Erwin Bach, who she'd been with since 1986. When speaking about why she relocated to Europe back in 1997, Tina said, I've left America because my success was in another country and my boyfriend was in another country, adding that her single private dancer was a smashing success in the UK. The couple had been living in Switzerland for years, but due to strict laws in the country, there are restrictions against foreigners purchasing property. Therefore, Tina and her man had been renting a compound known as Chateau Algonquin for many, many years, an absolutely jaw-dropping home in Zurich, Switzerland. Back when Tina was still with Ike, she always felt like she never had space of her own and needless to say, she's now making up for it with this home, where she was in total control of her physical surroundings. While the interior of this place is under pretty strict lock and key, reports suggest that this estate looked like a European palace. It has ivy snaking up the walls, gardeners manicuring plentiful shrubs, and a life-size two-legged horse sculpture that's suspended from a domed sea feeling inside. I mean, there's reportedly even a room stuffed to the gills with Louis XIV inspired sofas featured alongside a portrait of Tina rendered as an Egyptian queen. If what's been rumored is true, then the Algonquin is simply overflowing with beautiful things inside and out, like pieces of a giant shattered amethyst crystal arranged alongside the in-ground swimming pool and framed photos of Egyptian royalty. If you're wondering about the Egyptian inspired decor, while well, Tina sensed that she used to be Egyptian royalty in a former life. When asked in a more recent interview about her favorite parts of this stunning mansion, Tina replied, oh, I don't have a favorite room at all. However, in the course of one's life, one accumulates many objects for which one needs space. I have, for example, some artifacts of Egyptian art. I like to be surrounded by these and other collectibles. It is not at all about whether they are expensive or valuable. The important thing is that I have a personal relationship with each one. I also love the view of Lake Zurich from our garden. I enjoy the peace and quiet. While the couple was happily living in Chateau Algonquin, it was reported that in fall 2021, Tina and Erwin invested in a property of their own, an estate which cost $76 million, no less. This property is a 10 building waterfront estate overlooking Lake Zurich, also in Switzerland, of course. And it's said that tennis star Roger Federer considered buying the property at one point, but I guess Tina beat him to it. Erwin had hinted that he and Tina used the new compound, which spanned over 240,000 square feet of space space as a weekend retreat close to where their main residence is located. This property is a century old historic estate with 10 structures spread over 5.5 acres of land with plenty of private lakefront access. There's also a private pond, stream, swimming pool, and a boat deck on the shore of Lake
Lake Zurich. It's no doubt this was Tina's type of place as outdoor space has always been a priority for her. Back in 2000, she told Architectural Digest, I need nature and solitude, they nurture me. My idea of a vacation is reading a book on the terrace while my boyfriend cooks his dinner. The mansion purchase came quite recently, only a month before Tina agreed to sell her vast music catalog to German music company BMG for $50 million. To which Tina said, the protection of my life's work, my musical inheritance is something personal. I am confident that with BMG and Warner Music, my work is in professional and reliable hands. Aside from this retreat, Tina also long enjoyed a vacation home located on the French Riviera, a villa situated in the hills. Tina would often drive herself south from her home in Switzerland to throw lavish parties and celebrations here in France, but she also enjoyed this property because it's in the heart of the wilderness. Tina says she discovered it after renting a little pink house nearby and when she heard that a villa was up for sale, she jumped at the opportunity. The villa is situated between two mountains and surrounded by woods and wildlife. More recently, the interiors at the French abode were described as a mix of grandeur balanced by informality. She told Architectural Digest, When I see something I love, a suite of furniture, a piece of art, I never measure, I never hesitate, I just buy it. Eventually, I'll find a place for it. I've always wanted and needed to transform my surroundings because decorating is my first response to loss and upheaval. Settle, collect, create a private universe. Tina and her designers drew inspiration from all over, including the Greek. Her home boasts Greek and Roman pottery and sculptures that are always on display and other accents throughout. Even the column pool and terraces have canvas shades bordered with a Greek key motif. Elsewhere, Tina had a small private library where she could write and study on an antique card table surrounded by her leather-bound volumes on art, religion, and ancient history. Then we come to the master suite, which was Tina's favorite room in this house and one that she's taken to calling Cleopatra's Barge, which obviously has an Egyptian theme, while the decor complements the amazing views of the sea. Downstairs, you'll find a plush basement spa, a screening room, and a trophy room, while every major space in this multi-level villa opens to a patio or balcony with stunning views over the Riviera. While the world grieves the loss of legend Tina Turner, she will no doubt be remembered forever for the mark she made on the music industry, as well as in the Switzerland community she chose to call home for so many years. That's going to wrap up today's special house tour, but before we go, answer this question for me. If you had to move to a European country to start anew, which would you be choosing to call home? Let me know in the comments below and leave your condolences or favorite memories of Tina Turner to read as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram to chat. I'm Kara, and if you'd like to check out another tour before you go, then stay Stay tuned because next we'll check out the homes of the late Whitney Houston. Bye! Since Whitney Houston's untimely death in 2012, family and friends have been picking up the pieces and fans often wondered throughout the years what became of her homes. Despite her hit songs and success, Whitney reportedly passed away in a state of financial disarray. We do know the last place she called home was her distinctive estate in New Jersey, with an overhead view almost resembling a UFO landing pad. In more recent years, this five acre home was purchased for $1.5 million by a big Whitney fan. Aside from this house, the singer also formerly lived in a more traditional style abode in Alpharetta, Georgia. Today we'll take a look at a couple of the mansions that were once owned by the legendary Whitney Houston. In these videos we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Whitney Houston was one of the best selling artists of all time and a Grammy award winning one at that, starting her music career at the young age of 19. She grew up in New Jersey singing for the church choir and went on to become the voice of the 80s and the 90s. Houston is even certified as the most awarded female artist by the Guinness World Records. The beloved singer's first two studio albums both peaked at number one and her fame would only rise from there. Considering all of Whitney's success, and while at one point she even signed a $100 million record deal, it came as a shock to many that she actually died a reported $20 million in debt. Apparently this contract with Sony Arisa was meant to be paid in stages, with each installment being a loan depending on the success of her recordings. Sadly, Whitney's past success didn't translate to current times. Whitney died in February 2012, and while this was an untimely tragedy, not even a year later, the Houston estate began to thrive. The legend's estate earned $40 million, helping to pay off her debt. With fans mourning the loss, Whitney's records were being bought up left, right, and center, and there was also help from the late star's movie, Sparkle. 
These days, Whitney's name has been cleared of her debt and she can rest in peace. All that being said, many have wondered about the singer's real estate holdings and she actually still owned her longtime contemporary New Jersey estate at the time of her passing. The concrete and glass structure last sold for $1.5 million back in 2014. Hey guys, it's Care the Vampire Slayer and I'm bringing you another house tour here on Famous Entertainment. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, we post a new video daily. Today we'll be taking a look at two of the former estates of the late singer Whitney Houston, including her main residence in New Jersey that's unique to say the least, and another classic looking home she used to own in Georgia. If you like this video, we've done plenty of other celebrity house tours on legends like Tina Turner and Elton John, and we'll link to some at the end. As always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram to chat, and now, let's get into this video. In 2014, it was reported that Whitney's former main residence was finally sold to someone who was actually a huge fan of the late singer. The home originally went up for sale at $2.5 million and sold for $1.5 million to emergency room physician and investor Matthew Krauthammer. He said the home reminds him of Houston's true heart. Whitney bought the home back in 1987 for $2.7 million when she was at the peak of her stardom and the home was less than a year old. The concrete and glass structure sits on five acres of land in the township of Mendham, New Jersey, and it was also the site of Whitney's wedding to Bobby Brown back in 1992. The sprawling, multi-winged modern mansion measures in at over 12,500 square feet of space with circular interior spaces and almost looks like a UFO landing pad from aerial views. There are five beds, five baths, and features like a six-car garage and 13 skylights throughout the residence. Whitney's former master suite here was round and painted a shade of peach at the time she owned it, which I'm sure has since been changed. The massive bedroom also had a full wall of curving glass that overlooked the backyard, another similar wall that acted as an interior wall, and a built-in bed on a circular platform. Talk about throwback. A wide walkway leads to the front of the home where there's a long curved entrance hall with peach tiled flooring, and right next to this space is the circular living room, which is separated by a curved wall of stained glass. The formal living room boasted four or more plush white sofas back then, lined up along another wall of curved glass, and other features here included a stone fireplace, sunken bar, and a massive dome-shaped skylight. Winnie's former dining room also had these peach-colored floors and more walls of floor-to-ceiling glass, not to mention more glass in the form of the long dining table with seating for 10 that looked like it was straight from the 80s. The kitchen boasted a large work island with white cabinets and some more dark peach colors throughout, while the nearby family room had a fireplace and more of the same curved glass walls. The grounds of Whitney's former space-like home included multiple large lawn areas, as well as a handful of patios and terraces at the back of the house. There's also a swimming pool, a pool house, and a tennis court. During Whitney's many years living here, she reportedly added a games room, a media room, a professional recording studio, and all of those backyard amenities I just mentioned. While most if not all of the interior design at Whitney's mansion is now outdated and tacky, I'm willing to bet the current owner had the space modernized and upgraded to suit the current decade. The owner, Matthew Krauthammer, was reportedly trying to acquire the five acre property for three years until finally scoring it in 2014. He said about Whitney, who he's also a big fan of, she was generous to so many people and she spent a fortune renovating the house. The grounds are beautiful. At the time of purchase, Matthew was already living in Mendham and knew a thing or two about lavish real estate purchases. He planned to move into Whitney's former home after a few months of renovations and repainting. He said that Whitney hadn't lived at the home for about five years before her passing in 2012, which is another reason why it may have been so outdated. Back around 2009, it was also reported that Whitney owned the home next door, which she picked up in 1993 for over 573k, and it was allegedly used for staff, family, or guests. Whitney's main residence did come up on the market around 2009 as well, but she never ended up selling. And at that time, this additional property was put on the market for just under 950K. There were no reports of this property being sold either, but it was connected to the UFO style home by a small pathway, and it measured in at around five acres as well. There was a home here spanning 3,410 square feet with three beds and three baths, as well as features like an indoor lap swimming pool and full-size basketball court outside. 
side. Let's move on to another former home of Miss Houston, her place in Alpharetta, Georgia. Unfortunately, there are essentially no photos of this residence's interior, so we'll just have to use our imagination. Whitney's former Atlanta area home was much more traditional in style than her New Jersey place, and it's still currently owned by the same family the singer sold it to back in 2007. In recent years, they've actually given the estate a big renovation and touch up, which we can see from aerial photos of the exterior. This home was located in the exclusive gated community Country Club of the South, and she and her former husband purchased the two level mansion in 2003 for about $1.3 million, later selling it for $1.19 million. The home sat on half an acre lot and inside featured 6,633 square feet with five beds and seven baths. Other features of Whitney's former Georgia house included a kitchen with wet bar, breakfast nook and bar, a billiards room, more than one balcony throughout, and a three car garage. There was also a pool and spa out back. Linda McCoy, who's a resident of this country club community and a former neighbor of Whitney's, said about the legendary singer, She was always very friendly. If you saw her out walking her dog or jogging, she always spoke. If she passed you in her car, she would wave. Houston and her ex, Bobby Brown, only lived here for less than four years and splitting time between this residence and the New Jersey house. Much of Bobby's short-lived reality show Being Bobby Brown was shot at the Alpharetta property, and the couple was known for often redecorating and remodeling. While Whitney hung on to her New Jersey residence after divorcing Brown, she downsized for her next Atlanta area spa. Still in Alpharetta, she moved to Riverbend Manor Drive and purchased a three-story townhome in another gated community called North Gated Ellard. This house was still upscale, but slightly more modest, spanning 3,600 square feet with three beds, 3.5 baths, and features like a courtyard, a balcony, and stunning double height entryway. Sadly, some of the only photos that surfaced of Whitney's Georgia real estate were those infamous bathroom photos released in the tabloids when the star was battling her ongoing drug addiction. The shocking images were said to be taken at her Alpharetta residence at the time, which was clearly during Whitney's time of struggle. After checking out where the late Whitney Houston called home before her untimely passing, I think that concludes this house tour. We checked out her longtime New Jersey residence that was more recently taken over by a fan, as well as what we knew about her properties in Georgia. What did you guys think? What about that UFO looking residence with all its glass walls and circular rooms? Now that was something else. But hey, I didn't totally hate it. I can also see how cool it would have been back in the 80s and 90s. I don't know about you guys, but I'm curious as to how the current owner ended up revamping the place and considering he's a Whitney fan, if he left any of the original features to remember her by. Be sure to tell me what you liked or didn't like about Whitney's homes in the comments down below. I think it's been fun doing some of these musical legend house tours, so if you guys have any ideas on who's next, definitely throw some ideas out there. I'm thinking maybe Diana Ross or maybe Paul McCartney. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.